Have you ever thought about moving to France, but worried about hidden challenges? Because there are certain things nobody tells you, either because they are afraid or ashamed, or because it's not politically correct. Here is the thing. You should be concerned. You really should. There is a chance you'll be disappointed, unless you are a Brit moving to Bordeaux. Because most Brits somehow manage to live happily in that part of France, today we discover the main reasons for Reiners who move to retire in France regret their choice. We also understand the curious case of success between Bordeaux and the Brits, and what is their secret? I have gathered the stories of dozens of foreigners who lived in France for years and uncovered the seven common regrets they never expected. What you are about to see is eye-opening, not only for those planning to move to France, but for many other European countries. The first four causes for regrets are small things that are easy for you to avoid. They just require some adaptations. The last three, however, are more dangerous, and often people are afraid to talk about them. And the first regret is, in certain areas, it will be very difficult for you to socialize. The most important thing here is to not compare the French way of socialization to the American way. In the US, you can easily interact with friendly employees at the local Walmart and exchange fishing stories. In France, this is way more difficult. For example, if you ask Americans about their holidays, they might say, oh, it was amazing, it was wonderful. By contrast, a French person might just say, c'est vraiment pas mal, which means not really bad. And that is interesting because the French spend a lot of time socializing. In Europe, they are in the fourth place among the people that spend more time socializing. But most of the socialization happens within circles that are not easily accessible to outsiders. This is what a foreigner resident in France told us about his experience. Open quote. I'm in Poitiers, West Center. It's horribly cold in terms of social contact. Everything is happening behind closed doors, and you need to be a part of the inner circle to get to it. You may never reach it if you don't know someone inside. End quote. Of course, there are other European countries where it's even more difficult to make friends. Like, for example, well, better stay quiet here. There is also another very, very big obstacle to socializing and making friends in France, but that we'll review in a few minutes, because now it's time for the second reason for Reiner's regret moving to France, the day-to-day -day cultural differences that exist in many regions. Have you ever heard of Chinese water torture? Apparently, in the past, they let a drop of water fall on the head of a tired person for days and days, and that drove the poor person crazy. For some expats, the small cultural differences in France can feel like tiny drops of water, harmless at first, but gradually wearing you down over time. After weeks, months, and years, it becomes a huge burden. I'm not talking about big things here, but small daily contrasts. The way street vendors talk to you, or the general sense of humor. This is what a British living in France told us. Open quote. I just can't stand so many little aspects of French culture that seem worse compared to the UK culture I'm used to. Rude and unhelpful retail staff. No banter. Very little sense of humor in people you meet on a daily basis. End quote. And the very concept of joking is quite peculiar in France. While British humor, like Monty Python, is based on absurdity, French humor relies on the subtleties of the second degree, which is based on irony and sarcasm, and very often difficult to realize that it's a joke if you're not used to it. And since you are talking about obstacles for expats living in France, the third cause for regret is to ignore and disrespect certain things that the French are very proud of. Be aware that certain behaviors might make it hard for the locals to accept you. And I prefer to explain this with a very peculiar, but not surprising, story from a local resident in France. Open quote. The last American I spoke with asked me where the nearest McDonald's was, right in front of a boulangerie with far better sandwiches. When I told him I didn't think there was one within walking distance, he sarcastically replied, Open quote. You mean you don't know where the McDonald's is? End quote. You might be thinking by now, what is the problem? People have the right to eat whatever they want. I get it. I also thought that before. But imagine going to a family dinner at your mother's-in-law house. When she starts serving everyone, you take a Big Mac from your bag, 
and eat in front of the other guests at the table instead of eating her food, maybe she would get offended if you rejected her food, right? That comparison might sound absurd, but I think it's the best way to explain how a French feel when a foreigner comes, rejects all the things the French are famous for, and keeps behaving as if he was still in Cleveland. This advice of going local also applies to wine, cognac, etc. Here is what a French person told us, open quote, I live in four different regions in France, and food and booze is our common identity. If you keep telling French people the food and everything else in your country is better, they will tell you to go back home, end quote. Going local also means learning as much as possible of the local language. And that is exactly what the next point is about. Because the fourth case of regret for expats who retire in France is the language barrier. First of all, if you are coming to stay for a very short time, it's understandable that you will not have time enough to learn a language. However, if you are coming for longer, it's extremely advisable to learn French. This is what a man married to a French told us. Open quote. Living in France with a French wife from East Asia myself, not having C1 level French is a huge disadvantage. End quote. If you are moving to Paris, you can survive without speaking French, but this would limit your interactions with locals. Although Parisians have a fame of being less tolerant if you speak broken French, as a foreigner residing there told us, open quote, people in second and third tier cities were so much nicer and more helpful when I used the wrong word or didn't conjugate correctly. Parisians, on the other hand, were tip about it, end quote. In France, only 39% of all people speak English, and they are concentrated in large metropolitan areas. In little towns, simple daily tasks like grocery shopping or visiting the doctor become challenging, and essential services are not offered in English. Furthermore, the language barrier often hinders social integration. This isolation can lead to loneliness, as making friends become difficult. This is what a local told us about this. Open quote. I am French, and I worked with thousands of US expats for years. All I can say is learning French should be your top priority. Over the years, the ones who learned the language are the ones who integrated without problems, especially if you're not in Paris. End quote. Another consequence of the language barrier is the impact on administrative tasks. Navigating France's complex bureaucracy is challenging even for native speakers. So here is one thing that I always recommend. If you plan to move to France, especially to smaller cities, be prepared to learn French. In the comment section and in the description, I put the link for a very effective software that I use it to learn French. And this is the secret of so many Brits that live in Bordeaux. They speak French. So these four causes of regret we mentioned so far might be relatively easy to avoid, but the next three are way more complicated. And in many cases, more serious. But before we enter this top three, I would like to ask a small favor. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. So we enter now into the real deal breakers for many expats who move to retire in France. We start with the cost of living. France nowadays is the 13th most expensive country in the world. It's more expensive than richer countries like Sweden or Germany. It's even more expensive than Luxembourg, the richest country in the world. How is that? possible? The answer is simple. In Germany or Sweden, the cost of living is not that different between cities. The most expensive cities in Germany, Berlin and Frankfurt, are only one-third more expensive than cheap cities like Dresden. Meanwhile, in France, the differences are humongous. Cities like Paris and Lyon can have costs that are almost twice the average cost of medium cities like Perpignan. Other cities like Toulouse and Strasbourg are also surprisingly expensive. These urban areas are what push the average cost of living in France higher than the average in Germany. The price of an apartment in these cities will cost double the price of the rest of the country. In this map, you see the value of renting an apartment per square meter. This dark red expensive area with prices close to 30 euros per square meter is Paris. This is Lyon, this is Marseille, this is Toulouse, this is Bordeaux. But outside the area surrounding these big cities, you have hundreds of cities with very low prices. This is because countryside living in France can be remarkably cheap. Nîmes, a medium city with 150,000 residents located in the Occitanie region, not far from the Mediterranean coast, you can buy a two-bedroom apartment for 99,000 euros. 
are only $110,000. You can find even lower prices in departments like Rose or Haute Vienne. In Creuse, for example, there is this three-bedroom house for sale for 61,100 euros. But the problem is, most of the foreigners, including expatriates, will not move to those places, and instead, they prefer expensive cities like Bordeaux or Lyon. And then regret when they realize these cities are more expensive than Germany and have costs similar to Florida. Even those who go to live in smaller, cheaper cities, they still might be surprised by another thing, which is the next cause of regret for those who decided to retire in France. It's the French tax system. Which, for many expats, is the second worst thing about France, only losing to the one you discovered soon. I won't spend much time here, but rather just compare France with a few other countries we already covered. Let's imagine you earn 50,000 per year on income from abroad, like pensions. If instead of France you move to Chaka, a beautiful coastal town in Sicily that you covered recently, you pay 3,500 per year in income tax, only 7% of your income. The same applies to Thessalonic in Greece. There, you also pay 3,500 per year or only 7% of income tax on your pensions from abroad. If you decided to move to Portugal, a country that we also covered in previous videos, you pay 5,000 per year in income tax, meaning 10% of your total income from abroad. In France, however, your income tax, including social contributions, will be 19,550 per year. So 39 of your entire pension will be taken by the French government. Sounds nightmarish? Well, but the high taxes are not the last thing that causes retirees in France to regret, because the last, and in some cases, the biggest reason for regret for some expats who moved to France is the increasing violence. Before jumping to numbers, I want to tell the personal story of a foreigner in France. Open quote. I had many dodgy encounters and was even beaten up by six men who stole my phone at night in a dark street. I know a lot of women were harassed on the streets. It's not Brazil, for sure. But still even I, as a man, was scared to walk back home after bars closed. End quote. We all know that violence increased in France, but... The mistake most foreigners make is talking about violence in France in general terms. Crime in violence is very location-specific. More location-specific than in the US, and more than in most European countries, except maybe for Belgium. That means that most of the violence and criminal occurrences in France occur only in certain places. Look at this map. These red dots are where most of the robberies are concentrated. They are all big cities. It's not a matter of population, as these are proportional numbers per 1,000 residents. So in larger cities in France, you have a much bigger chance of being victim of a crime. This is what a resident in Toulouse, another large French city, told us. Open quote. I lived in Toulouse for about 10 years and left for the Netherlands partially because of how unsafe France has become. End quote. And Paris is even worse. Because in the French capital, you are 19 times more likely to be the victim of a crime than in the countryside. Even in Paris, however, there are some relatively safe areas. If you want to understand more about what happened there and how Paris became as dangerous as some parts of Latin America, check this video here on your last. And remember, avoid the Gare du Nord during the night.